All right, so when it comes to seasoning cast iron, there are slightly different methods out there, but they are all generally about the same with a couple little tweaks here and there. Now, the method I use, I found, is the easiest way to season your cast iron. I have posted this on my TikTok channel and people have really thanked me, saying it's the most informative video they've seen on seasoning and how simple it really is. Now, the seasoning on your cast iron is a protective barrier that protects your cast iron cookware from rust. That is its main role. It's not just to make it non-stick. It will give it minor non-stick properties. Uh, making your cast iron non-stick is more about temperature control and technique when it comes to cooking. The seasoning is to simply protect your cast iron. Now you'll see that your cast iron is seasoned if it has a dark black patina to it. This skillet here is a restoration that I'm working on. It's only been through one round of seasoning, but you can see that it still looks pretty dark already. Before I put the first round of seasoning on it, it looked more of a very dull gray when it's just stripped down to bare iron without seasoning on it. And what we're doing is taking our liquid oil, coating our cast iron with it, uh, and then when we bake it in the oven, we're turning basically this liquid oil into a solid via the process of polymerization. All right, so it's no longer a liquid oil. It is a polymer when this is all said and done. A lot of people like to compare it to a plastic-like surface. So it is a hard protective barrier. And you don't need a lot to season your cast iron. Obviously you need your cast iron. You need a good quality oil. Now I'm not an oil zealot here. I do like grapeseed oil. I'm going to be using grapeseed oil. Uh, people will use different oils like avocado oil. Some people, especially down south, will use Crisco. I'm using grapeseed oil and I have been experimenting with some blends recently, but in this video I'll be using grapeseed. Then you're gonna need some rags. I prefer to have three different rags, which we'll go over in a second. So without further ado, let's get to it. So first thing, you're going to put a little bit of oil in your skillet, about this amount or so. You can't really over oil it, which we'll get to in a second. So now I'm gonna take my first rag, my main oiling rag, and I'm gonna wipe all that oil inside the skillet. And hopefully you can see from this camera angle, you can see that the oil is dark there and the spot that I missed here. So you're gonna make sure that you really get in and get every square inch of your cast iron oiled up. Make sure you get the tops, you get your pour spouts. And I generally like to do this on a cutting board. That way I'm not getting oil all over my countertops. It really does help with cleanup after. Then once I'm happy with the cooking surface, I'll turn my skillet over. And again, you can really see the difference. Oiled up, not oiled up. I'm going to apply some oil to the bottom of my skillet here. Take my same rag, my main oil rag, and wipe it all over the bottom, those side walls. Underneath the handle. Then lastly, what I generally like to do is the handle. I'll use the excess oil on the rag to generally do that. Now it's important that you get literally everywhere, even on the inside of this handle. Because if this is a restoration, and let's say this is my first round of seasoning, and if I miss a spot with the oil, I'm gonna put it in the oven, I'm gonna take it out, and that spot that I missed is gonna be completely rusted. And I'm gonna have to, in my case, I like to just strip it down completely. So it's important to get every square inch everywhere. So now this skillet has been completely oiled up every square inch. Now this next part is the most important part, okay? If you right now put this skillet inside of your oven to bake for an hour, you're gonna take this out and it's gonna look like a nightmare. It's gonna have streaks going down the sidewalls. It's gonna be sticky. It's gonna be gummy. And like I said, it's gonna look like an absolute nightmare. And this is where a lot of people go wrong. This next step here is super important. I take my second rag. 
I like to use bandanas. I'm going to wipe all of that oil off of the skillet. I'm gonna wipe it off like I didn't want it there in the first place. So I'm gonna wipe the bottom well. I'm gonna wipe down the handle so I can put my hand on it and not be too greasy. All right, now I'm gonna wipe off the sidewalls, the top of the rim, wipe down the cooking surface. Make sure I get in that handle nice and good. All right, so I wipe this whole skillet down. I think all the excess oil is off, but what I like to do is I like to not be that sure. I'm gonna take a third rag, a very, very clean rag, and I'm gonna wipe that oil off even more, just to be sure it's off. Now, I'm saying we're wiping the oil off, but we're not actually wiping the oil off. The oil's still on here. We're just wiping off the excess. Because like I said, if we don't, it's gonna come out like a nightmare, all sticky and gummy, and it's not gonna be good. So now I'm confident all of that oil is off. So now it's time to put this skillet in the oven. Temperatures vary from person to person. Some people do 425, 450, 475, 500. It all ranges. I'm not too picky again on really what oil you use as long as it's quality and what temperature you really use. Uh, again, it'll generally be anywhere from four to 500. Me, I like it right dead in the middle. I usually season my cast iron at 450 degrees. Now, when you're seasoning cast iron, you can absolutely season more than one piece at a time. Basically, as many pieces that fit in your oven, you can season. Uh, you can even have them stacked on top of each other like this in your oven. I generally try and space them out as much as I can, um, but I like to do multiple pieces because I'm restoring several pieces a week, so I don't want to run my oven for a couple hours for one piece and a couple hours for another piece. So I'm generally going to get my best bang for my buck and, and really season as many pieces as possible. If not, feel free to just do one. It's not a big deal. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this skillet and also this griddle that I'm restoring in the oven for one hour at 450 degrees. So I have the griddle on the top rack. I have the skillet on the bottom. So it's been an hour. It's time to take my cast iron out of the oven. I personally like to put trivets on top of my cutting boards and let my cast iron cool down here as opposed to setting it on my stove top to cool down just because it takes a little bit longer, but you can simply take your cast iron out of the oven, put it on top of your stove and let it cool down and get it ready for the second round or third round or fourth round of seasoning. So I have my cast iron out of the oven. What I'm going to do since I'm doing another round of seasoning, I'm gonna let these cool down just enough that I could safely touch it with my bare hands. Then I'm gonna run it through that whole oiling and wiping process and then put it back in the oven. And you can see in the background here, this Griswold griddle looks super dark already. The skillet is a little bit patchy in the center. We'll blend in on the next round, but you can see that the bottom looks really, really good. Okay, so my cast iron has cooled down enough that I could handle it safely. Let's get it oiled up. It's gonna be the same process as before. I'm gonna wipe all the oil on it, then wipe all that oil off. In the meantime, I'm gonna go over a couple things. Timing. So generally when I restore a piece, I run it through four rounds of seasoning. I try and just do it back to back to back and just get it done with in one shot in one day, which is why I'll let it cool down just enough where I could touch it and I'll get it oiled up again because I'm trying to just crank it out, get it done. Now, it doesn't have to be done that way. You could do a round of seasoning at night and wake up and do another round of seasoning in the morning. That's completely fine. You don't have to go back to back to back and you don't have to do it while the skillet's still warm. You can let it cool down completely if you know your schedule needs it to. No need to rush it. And then how many rounds of seasoning should you do? When I'm restoring a piece, like I said, I like to put it through four rounds of seasoning. That seems to be the sweet spot. If I was simply re-seasoning a piece of cast iron that is already seasoned, I'll probably do it two times, maybe three. But again, you're not gonna over-season your cast iron, so feel free to do more if your heart desires. So I've got this thing oiled up. Take my second rag, wipe all that oil off.
Once again, this is the most crucial step. And this is why I also say you can't over oil your skillet. You know, people will uh, mess up, not wipe all the oil off. And they'll ask people, you know, where did I go wrong? And some people will respond, oh, you over oiled your skillet. That's not true. You didn't over oil it. You just didn't wipe all the oil off. So that's why it's important to get, at least for me, that third rag, that super clean, dry rag, and give it another really good wiping. And even after this round of oiling, you can see how great it looks. It's not even in the oven yet. So now I'll do the same for my griddle, put them back in the oven for their third round of seasoning. Okay, so the four rounds of seasoning is complete and you can see the nice dark black patina. Now this seasoning will last a very long time. Uh, even if I were to use this skillet every day, I wouldn't have to really run it through any rounds of seasoning for several months. So don't think that you need to do this on a weekly or even monthly basis. You might have to do it every six months, maybe even every year. What I tend to notice just needs to be reseasoned is maybe the edges from dragging it on my uh, gas grates, the handle from just wear, natural wear and tear. Um, so once you start to see the, like the seasoning that that dark black start to fade a little bit, then maybe it's time to reseason. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it was thorough enough for you. And good luck on seasoning your cast iron. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the content.